With the new ZenBook Primes, Asus tries to fix most of the issues users encountered with their first generation Ultrabooks and add a couple of extras on top, just enough to make this perhaps the best Ultrabooks money can buy right now. In this clip, we're going to analyze the Asus ZenBook Prime UX31A, their 13.3 inch thin and light laptop and take you through all of its important aspects. This way, by the time we reach the end, you'll know why this is uh, my new favorite Ultrabook right now, but also where Asus could have done a better job with it. We're going to start by taking a quick look at the exterior. Of course, if there's one thing customers loved about the first ZenBooks, that's the extravagant looks. With a brushed aluminum body and a thin silhouette, the ZenBooks are among the most appealing laptops ever built, especially if you're after a bit of glam, although some might find the Asus Ultrabooks a bit ostentatious. The ASUS UX31A weighs 2.96 pounds and measures 0.65 inches in its thickest point, but it does seem a lot sleeker, mainly because its front part is significantly slimmer than the back. In fact, you should be careful with those sharp edges, they might cause unpleasant accidents. The ZenBook Prime isn't, however, the thinnest or the lightest Ultrabook in its class, but that's somewhat compensated by its sturdy feel and solid build quality. The UX31A lines a couple of ports on its sides. On the left, there's an USB slot, an audio mic jack and a card reader. On the right, you'll get a power LED, the mini VGA and micro HDMI video output, another USB port and the DC in. Given its size, ASUS couldn't fit a LAN adapter and had to go for mini VGA and micro HDMI ports on this ZenBook Prime UX31A, which is a bit annoying, but at least they offer USB to Ethernet and mini VGA to VGA adapters in the pack. There's a single sheet of metal on the bottom with some cooling grills on the back and the two speakers carved on each edge. That means you don't get a removable battery and you won't be able to easily access the internals, but that's a given with most Ultrabooks these days. Lifting the lid, you'll also find aluminum covering the interior with a lighter finish for the palm rest and the area around the keys and the darker finish for the screen's bezel. The screen's hinge looks good and solid as well while hiding the cooling exhaust behind it. The entire palm rest is spacious with a white trackpad in the middle and you should notice that there's nothing piercing the shell as the power button is masked as one of the keys, the top left one and it's stiffer than the others so you won't accidentally press it. The keyboard and the trackpad were problematic on the first generation ZenBooks and luckily ASUS managed to address most of their issues. They replaced the tacky silver keyboard with a new chiclet one with dark keys and illumination. This way the keys are more robust, better spaced and offer a bit better travel and feedback as well, which makes typing on the UX31 an overall pleasant experience. As for the trackpad, that looks a lot like the one on the first generation ZenBooks, although ASUS now only uses Allen trackpads and dumped those faulty centelics. They've also worked on the software and as a result I was overall satisfied with this trackpad, as it's now accurate and not as jumpy as before. Single tapping is still a bit problematic though, and I couldn't find a way to make the touchpad a bit more sensitive, but multi-touch gestures seem to be working fine and ASUS includes a bunch of them involving one, two or three fingers. And the trackpad on my test unit actually managed to properly cope with palm rejection as well. The ZenBook UX31A is just another proof that every laptop should have an IPS display. The 13.3 inch panel offers full HD resolution which allows incredibly crisp images and texts, but is a bit problematic as well giving Windows 7's inability to properly scale up fonts and interface elements. If you leave those as default though, everything is going to be very small on this screen, which uh, can be annoying and even cause headaches. Except for that, this is arguably one of the best displays I've ever seen on a laptop. It's sharp, decently bright, offers good contrast and excellent colors. And it's made, which means you'll be able to use it even outside in bright light. As for the viewing angles, they are like night and day compared to what we get on regular TN displays, but I for one would have still preferred to be able to lean back the screen a bit more. There are however some issues with IPS screens, like bleeding around the edges and bright spots, and they are present on the UX31 as well. They are visible on dark static images, but you'll hardly notice them otherwise. That's why I for one don't find this particular aspect that much of a problem. It's time now to see how does this laptop perform during everyday use. The UX31A is built on an Intel Ivy Bridge ULV hardware platform with integrated Intel HD 4000 graphics, 4GB of RAM and SSD storage. You can choose between a Core i5 or a faster Core i7 processor and my test unit came with the later. 
What does this mean? First of all, this laptop boots in under 30 seconds and resumes from sleep in around 2, despite packing a slower SSD than we used to get on the first Zenbooks. It's also snappy during daily activities and deals well with multitasking. You can use it for some serious tasks as well, like editing videos or photos, although it's not really designed for those. It will also handle all kind of multimedia content and even some games, but only simple or older titles. In fact, you'll find benchmarks and a couple of other details about the daily performances, including how it deals with games, in the written review on ultrabookreview.com. There's a link towards that in the description below. During everyday activities, the Asus UX31A is going to remain fairly cool and quiet, and while the fan does kick in from time to time, it's far from being too noisy. However, when pushing the laptop onto more serious tasks, the entire body will get slightly warm, while the bottom and the right palm rest area can even become hot. This usually happens with aluminum covered laptops, but can be slightly unpleasant as it will make your palm sweat. I should also mention a couple of things about the Bang & Olufsen audio system on this laptop, with speakers carved on the edges of the laptop facing down, one on each side. For Ultrabook speakers, they provide above average sound quality. However, I wish they were a bit louder, as they are not able to perform properly in a noisy room. As for the webcam, on top of the screen, it does a good job in apps like Skype or Google Talk. And there's one more thing, Asus opted for the latest Intel Centrino wireless solution for their Zenbook Primes, which translates in better Wi-Fi performances and adds Wi-Di. As we get close to the end of this review, there are two more things we should talk about. First of all, there's the battery life, which goes for about 4.5 hours of daily use on the ASUS ZenBook UX31A. That's alright I'd say, and can get better when using the computer lightly, dimming the screen or turning off the keyboard's backlighting. But there are ultrabooks out there that can offer 1 or maybe 2 hours of extra use time on a charge. And then there are the prices. Given the looks and all the features, you shouldn't be surprised that the ASUS ZenBook Prime UX31A is one of the priciest ultrabooks in stores. The base config starts at 1099 with a Core i5 processor and 128GB SSD, while the top version will get to 1499 with a Core i7 CPU, 256GB SSD and TPM. In the end, I can state that I'm glad to call the ZenBook Prime UX31A my new favorite ultrabook. I'm also happy to see that ASUS listened to their customers' complaints about their first-generation Ultrabooks and managed to address almost all of them with the new laptop, improving the keyboard, trackpad and screen while upgrading it to the latest Intel hardware platform. It still has its issues with the rather slow SSD, average speakers and potential phone scaling problems, but I for one could actually live with them. On the other hand, the ZenBook is expensive, like I already said above. But if you want the best, you'll have to pay for it. And don't forget that it's still cheaper than a MacBook Air while outfeaturing it on certain plans. Otherwise, you can find cheaper Ultrabooks in stores that might be better fitted for a budget-oriented buyer, including the mainstream ASUS ZenBooks UX32 line. Ok, that concludes our video review for the ASUS ZenBook Prime UX31A. Don't forget to share this clip to your friends if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel. More interesting videos will be available in the next days. Until then though, thanks for watching, Mike out.